Can I call meeting to order? Yes, you should be good now. Okay. Um, it is now 6.02. I would like to call the April 20th, 2020 regular meeting of the Board of Education to order. Um, everyone, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, roll we'll call, please, Sam. Mr. Carrera. Here. Mr. Park. Here. Ms. Nabel. Here. Mrs. Reed Demon. Here. Mr. Schultz. Here. Mrs. Selwick. Here. Mr. Forbert. Here. All right. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes of the regular meeting of the Board of Education on March 16, 2020 as presented? So moved. Okay, um, 
Any questions for Ms. Renemate or Mr. Schultz on this? All righty. Um, moving on, we've got the consent agenda. Are there any items on the consent agenda any members of the board would like to take out for separate consideration? Hearing none, do I have a motion to approve consent agenda items one through four as presented? So moved, Heather. Second, Rob. All right, any discussion? Roll call, please. Uh, oh, wait. What? Uh, just a quick question. On, um, sorry. <laughs> And get back to it here just a second on, on some of the reports just this might be a more of a question um for for um greg greg if he's on uh and that's basically just um on the um on the budget itself i know we've got the budget the actual here um but have we heard anything yet in terms of any delayed payment um uh, if you will, uh, real estate tax payments that come due on, on the beginning of June and September. Anything? Is there anything that's going to affect our budget? I guess, is, I guess is what I'm asking about that. So the short answer was, at this point, I have no idea. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that's just circulating out there. Uh, I can go into a lot greater detail when we talk about the budget down in the admin reports if you want me to, but. Kind of a note version is you know, it looks like they're going to go ahead and send the tax bills out uh, when they had planned on sending them out, and we'll probably get those payments when we're supposed to. I don't know exactly how he'll distribute them. Um, he did distribute a, a, a disproportionate amount last year, and that made June time frame. Uh, I think it may be more like what he used to do, which is more like 50-50. Versus what he did last year was, which was about like 56.44. Uh, so I think that's probably more likely to be the case. I don't really anticipate a lot of problems with tax collection. State funding is a different story, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in depth when we start looking at some of those budget numbers. If, if that's all right. Thank you. I have no further questions. Okay, thanks, Corey. Right. Any other comments or questions? So Carl, real quick on the on the board table, I, I just know that there's a, a reimbursement to me for board training. So when I vote on it, I'll be abstaining from my reimbursement, but I'll vote on the rest of it. If that's all right. Yep, that's just fine. Okay, roll call, please. Mrs. Sauer. Aye. Mr. Corbett. Aye. Mr. Schultz. Aye. Mrs. Renemek. Aye. Mrs. Hope. Hi. Mr. Farrell. Hi. Mrs. Mandel. Hi. All right, moving on. Administration report. Dr. Weissman. Um, well, I would say that the big administration report we've got right now is um, around COVID-19, um, but I'll, I've got a few comments on that at the end under superintendent comments. Otherwise, I wanted to turn some time over to Dr. Brown. He's got some guests with us tonight to talk about bond refunding. Uh, Dr. Brown, you want to take? go ahead and take that? So we talked a little bit about the, looking at the bond refunding again, now that interest rates looked really, really great at the last board meeting. And then like three days later, the market went screwy and uh, went completely out of whack. Uh, it looks like it started to settle back down again. So we have continued to just plot ahead a little bit here. And uh, at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Bob and Ann because they can do a whole lot better job filling you in on where things are at because uh, they're a lot closer to it on a day-to-day -day basis than I am. So at this point, I'll turn it over to Bob and Ann and let them give you kind of a synopsis of where we're at and what, what the possibilities are looking like. All right, great. Uh, hello, everybody. This is Ann Noble from CFO. Um, How are we sharing the presentation, Greg? Thank God. Uh, it's scanned into them so they can actually uh, look at it and see it. Okay. All right, great. Um, 
I am going to walk you through the first little bit of the presentation and just give you a brief uh, market update. Um, what Greg said is true, um, and you can see that on page three and page four, both of them. Um, let's focus on the green uh, lines in both of these graphs. Those represent 10-year interest rates at the potential bond refinancing that we're doing will be somewhere in that range, so that's a good measure to look at. Um, this first graph on page three uh, graphs uh, the Fed funds rate, but also graphs um, the municipal market data, which is what MMD stands for. MMD is simply just an index, kind of like the Dow Jones Industrial Average, but it is an index of municipal interest rates. So this graph goes all the way back to 03. So it gives you a 17 year history of interest rates. So we are obviously all the way over here on the right hand side. Um, but you can see from a historical perspective, we are basically at uh, all time lows, very, very, very close to all time lows. But if you go to the next page on page four, you can see what's been happening recently. So your last board meeting was right before this big old spike happened, <laughs> which is what Greg was mentioning. Um, we were at rock bottom lows right there um, in early March. Um, and then um, all of the virus and concerns related to the virus hit. And we saw a tremendous spike up that you almost couldn't even see on the last graph. You can see the spike up, but you can't see all of this great volatility on the last graph because this has been so condensed. If you look at that far right-hand side on the last graph, it's just buried. So, hence we provided it to you here on page four. So, um, the bond market really kind of shut down uh, about two to three weeks ago. There were almost no bonds getting pulled, mostly because there were no buyers buying. Um, we are slowly recovering, and you'll see this trend line over here on the right-hand side on page four. Um, it, we're slowly seeing investors come back to the market and bond issues getting done, but it's really been unprecedented times in the bond market due to investor concerns. Um, and, and a desire for liquidity. Um, investors really just wanting to cash out their investments. Um, and that has caused a massive uh, roadblock and uh, lack of access to the municipal bond market. <laughs> we are seeing some stability return. But one of the biggest question marks in our market still is the taxable bond market. And as you'll remember from the last time we spoke, and Bob will be highlighting more of it here, um, the bonds that we're proposing to sell are taxable bonds, meaning the interest income on those bonds is taxable to the investors. Taxable interest rates on the municipal bond market side have really um, not fully recovered yet. Uh, we're, we're still seeing a tremendous lack of investor participation in that market. So a lot of our comments to you tonight are predicated on the, the following introduction, which is we can't make a solid recommendation to you right now because we really don't know what the market is. We're not ready to sell bonds yet. And our recommendation is that we start the process because we have a month or so of work to do before we are close enough to sell bonds. And then at that time, we hope we can have a better sense of what the market looks like and how much we do and how we structure it. But right now, uh, the market is still in a pretty large amount of turmoil. But since we're not ready to sell yet anyway, there's not a lot of point in, uh, in getting ourselves too focused on that. Uh, if you go to page five, I think this is also a good uh, measure to look at. This is the distribution of interest rates over time, over a long range. 
Um, and you can see where current rates are now is the is the third bar over. Meaning the vast majority of time, all the bars to the right is when interest rates were higher. Interest rates have only been lower on the two bars to the left. So almost never. So even at today's crazy market turmoil, um, we are still at historic low levels. But we also recognize the volatility and that there's a lot up in the air still. Um, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Bob to walk us through briefly the, the plan and the timeline. Hey, and before I do that, did you uh, want to just touch on what's happened since the contagion hit? No pun intended, sorry. But um, from the state of Illinois situation impacts us, you wanted to touch on what's happened recently to their credit in the municipal market? Yeah, no, that's a great point, Bob. Um, so the state of Illinois, um, you know, we have
had a percentage increase scheduled for the year 19 that was above uh, the normal trend because we had uh, implemented a plan to restructure the bonds in $10 million chunks to take advantage of bank qualification. And, and then the tax law changed on us and we couldn't do that next phase on a tax exempt basis. So we, we paused this process for the last, I think the last financing we did was in 17. We were supposed to do one in early 18 as well. So uh, the, you use $675,000 to keep that percentage increase in that, that uh, range you've been at. Now it's fluctuated. The target's been about 4%, but it's fluctuated up and down because you, you pledge to abate all your sales tax dollars you get in. So sometimes they get more than anticipated, sometimes they get a little less. So it, it bounces around a little bit around that 4% level. Now the, the next major increase is for like year 20. You come from 8 million to 13 million. And that your deadline to impact that levy is March 1st of 2021. That's what Ann was alluding to earlier. While you um, need to do something, uh, or you have until March 1st to do something, it may not be the best strategy to wait all the way to March to do something just because of the, of the fact that there's a lot of uncertainty. You don't want to put yourself in a situation where you have to, to do something regardless of what the market might be at that time. Bob, Next slide. One thing right here. Um, one thing to think about as you look at this slide is you know your sales tax will be negatively impacted by the virus, right? Um, people just are not out. They're not eating out. They're not shopping the way they used to. Um, sales tax revenues will be down all across the state, which is part of what the state itself is struggling with. Um, so your sales tax revenues will be down um, by how much is still up for debate. Um, we do use a feasibility consultant on sales tax transactions that, that don't have a track record that are on new sales tax. We got one uh, a couple weeks for Springfield School, um, and then that feasibility study shows a decrease in um, the next year of 25%. Um, I hope that that is overly uh, negative, but it obviously will ripple through to you guys, and I just want to point that out. It can be part of this bond funding and restructuring. If we want to try to minimize that impact to your taxpayers, um, I know you guys have just been abating every dime you get. And if we wanted to say that sales tax was down due to the virus and you're, you just are abating less, that is a perfectly rational approach. But if you also want to try to smooth the tax rate, that will be part of the discussion that we can have with Greg and, and try to manage through this process. Thanks, Dan. And, and you know, just consider, too, that, you know, it's likely that whatever happens to the sales tax is hopefully that they gave one, hopefully, worst case, two-year dip that comes back up as things uh, normalize here at some point. So, you know, it's, it's going to be a guessing game no matter what you do on the sales tax. So, um, next slide is uh, just a uh, summary of your house principle and the reason we're showing you this is because the funds that have to be restructured and then all this should be in review for hopefully most of you are the O5B cap. Um, you notice how the payments have gotten smaller from living year 18, 19 and they jump up to 20 That's because we haven't restructured anything in 2021, 20, 22 and 23 and, and this is just the principal component. The, the interest component of those cabs is, was reflected in the prior page. But the reason I'm highlighting this is because those bonds are not callable. Uh, they were sold originally back in 2005 as being non-callable, if you recall. And why that's important is because when we go to restructure those, it has to be done with the change in the tax law that occurred, I was referring to earlier, you have to refinance them under most conditions on a taxable basis because Unless you're able to refinance within 90 days, uh, the IRS says you can't do any refunding as a tax exempt bond. So if we were to refund these bonds now, obviously those, those payments in years 21 through 23, the years where the pay 
payments are higher than we desire them to be, uh, those are all being more than 90 days out. So you have to do them as taxable. Unless what we looked at, uh, which I'll get into in a moment, the next slide is just a review, reminds you where you're at with your legal staff margin. It's always important to take a snapshot of that just to, to make sure that it doesn't impact the plan we're discussing. Uh, because even sometimes they do restructurings that can lead to an actual, an actual increase in the principal outstanding. Well, you have a legal debt margin at the bottom of that column of year, because of year 18 of 72, almost $73 million. So your legal debt margin doesn't constrain or, or impact any plans that we're doing. So that's all I really need to say about that slide. But let's go into the restructuring analysis now. With the, so we all know our deadline that we need to do something by is March 1st of 21. That's a sum on slide 11 now. And that uh, on a basic level, we would have to restructure those on a taxable basis. So what this slide here shows you is a hypothetical restructuring, which mirrors the ones that we looked at last, uh, the early December, I believe, when we last spoke. And the gray area shows what your current payment is. And what we want to do is take that gray area and, and move that out to the area where you see those, those blue columns and levy years uh, 25 to 28, and continue that, that general trajectory of about 4% growth a year. This is net of any abatement that was estimated previously. Um, the next slide shows you the detail that funnels into that slide. So you can, we've highlighted in the orange box those capital appreciation bond payments that have been restructured and lowered to a, a lower amount. And then the blue columns represent what the refunding bonds would look like. And then you can look at the green columns to see what the debt source would be afterwards with a 4% annual increase, not changing the sales tax assumption. Now, when, I'm on slide 13 now. When we're out here in December, we looked at a variety of different scenarios, some of which incorporate new money, and it was uh, communicated back to us at this time that the, the board didn't want to consider that option. And so we looked at, um, well, how else can we possibly do this as tax exempt? This is a review. And the way that you would do it, so if you did a tax bill, you could perhaps do it all at once and get it done today. That comes at a cost because you get sell at a higher interest rate. Um, I know AM last week, there was, he, or you mentioned earlier that the taxable mark is a little uh, difficult to, to estimate this time, although we did our best. But I know last week we did, this, we did the Springfield deal, we did a taxable and tax exempt component. Was there any overlap so you can at least give a ballpark of how the Springfield deals did relative to each other? Um, there was a little bit of overlap. Let me, I'll pull that up while you're talking, Mom. Okay. So, and if there was a way to do the refundings as tax exempt, we estimated, you know, you could have reduced the, the net borrowing cost of the structure by 2.9 million, all other things being equal, meaning no change in interest rates. But it's a little complicated to do the refunding as tax exempt, and it required you to do four different transactions over the next four years. And the way that mechanics of that would work is, because remember, you got to keep in mind, in order to be tax exempt, you have to be within 90 days of your payment date. And with your payment date being, I'm backing up just to check here, uh, January, excuse me, December 2nd, that means you would have to do something by September, no later, no earlier than September 1st. So remember our, our calendar. For state law purposes to change the levy, we have to do that by March 1st. But we can't close through in September 1st. There's a six month gap between those two dates. So, what we've done in a, a couple other places on a, a smaller scale is you abate the tax levy in, let's say, February of 21, and you cover that abatement, which would be about 6 million ish, 6, 7 million ish, with funds deposited at uh, the, the paying agent on your bond. That covers the abatement. That's what you're required to do that is a covenant to your bondholders. And then six months later, you sell the refunding bonds. Now you can do it on a tax exempt basis because you're within 90 days of the maturity date. And then the paying agent returns to you the six or seven million dollars that they were holding in escrow of your operating dollars. Because now you've covered that abatement with the refunding bonds. You would have to do that same process four years in a row to sell that refunding on a tax exempt basis, which uh, you know could save money. 
money. You know, one thing to keep in mind now that wasn't in play when we spoke to you before was the need potentially for liquidity. And I know you have your, your balances are fairly strong, so it may not be a concern if you want to do the tax exempt option. The, um, but those six, for that six to seven month period, you have six to seven million dollars that you don't have access to in your operating liquidity because you set it aside this escrow to cover your abatement. Um, so we, um, the other thing we look at is break even market movement. You know, how much would rates have to increase between now and those various refundings for you to be indifferent? And we, right, now, we, right now we have 190 basis points there. You know, that number fluctuates as a, as a relative market uh, calculation. And it, by the time you would do this deal, it will be even lower. And, and it's impacted by a variety of different things, what your investment, which you're able to invest in the escrow, what the difference between taxable and tax exempt rates are, which right now, as Anne said, is a little uh, difficult to measure. Um, yeah, it's about 75 basis points right now, Bob. Okay. That's, that's just a tad wider than they had um, previously in that area of the curve. So maybe, maybe it would have been 50 or 60 before, um, but it's, it's not that much wider. But it was a relatively smaller deal, and again, you didn't need to sell much demand to buy it. Right. Uh, so if, if you could back up one page, I'm now on slide 12. I want to do a historical comparison for you. If you look at the bottom of the green column, what your estimated total debt service was, or is, I'm sorry, and this, this is a, a current up-to-date scenario, we're estimating total debt service at the restructuring being just under $99 million. So this is not the impact of the restructuring, this is all your debt service together. It's so easier to look at it in total than to try to pull peel off the, the various components. If you go back to keep that just $98.8 million number in mind, go back to the next slide. When we estimated the restructuring in August of 2019, and that's the analysis that we presented to Greg in September and then ultimately we presented to the, the board slash finance committee, that number was $98.9 million. So we're actually slightly lower than that. And, and again, that was as a tax over funding. When we gave you the update in late February, early March, when rates had come down considerably, we are now estimating that number at 97 million. So the thought was when it was down to 97 million, it was like, well, that's not that much um, higher than what the tax exempt scenario was estimated back in August. So, uh, so on an absolute basis, rates have come down so much, it, it, the tax floor structuring seemed like it made a lot of sense to do because we didn't know how long those low tax flow rates would persist. So, other considerations, you know, Ann already brought this one up. Does the, is, does the district want to restructure this model to build a decrease in sales tax? And just to note, if you built in a decrease in the sales tax, you then have to decide, okay, we're going to build a dip that we come back out and get back on the same trend we were. Are we going to lower it and just keep it lower? Because if you lower the sales tax amount and you try to keep it at 4%, that means we have to restructure even more debt service because we don't have much sales tax to offset the annual increase. So it makes the restructuring more costly, whether it's tax exempt or taxable. And then do you want to continue with that 4% annual increase? If you can back up to slide. Um, 11, that's a graph that shows you the, the dark blue bars continue to go up 4% a year, which is the trajectory you're on. So you would, eventually your levy would get from just over $8 million to up just over $10 million. And one possibility for you to consider is, well, is there a point in time we don't want this to go up anymore? So maybe that number's nine half million, maybe it's 10 million. So imagine if you will, you take levy of 23 and draw a line across and you took everything above that line and just put that out on top of levy year 28. You, you still probably want to see an increase from levy year 27 to 28, but then that would keep your, it that would keep your taxpayers from having any more increases in, in the annual debt payment. And be a little bit more costly because you take a sliver off of 25, 26, and 27, now you're moving that up to 28. But that might be an ideal objective is to try to create a level of overall payment. 
I know in the past, when we brought that up as a possibility, I think the consensus was to stay on the 4% path. So the, the very last slide shows you a hypothetical timeline, really the fastest something could, you could do. Should A, the board be inclined to proceed with a restructuring now instead of waiting to either A, do a restru tactical restructuring later in the year, perhaps in early 2021 when you may not know what market conditions are, or if the district doesn't want to do the abatement uh, scenario and then try to do a restructuring in September of 21, which is, again, that, that scenario wouldn't allow you to sell tax exempt, but it would also um, require you to tie up six or seven million dollars in new liquidity. So if you were wanting to potentially move ahead, this is the, really the fastest possible timeline we could move on. So we'd be doing a credit presentation in May. You get your credit rating. Your rating is a double A three by standard or excuse me, by Moody's. You could adopt the parameters resolution on May 18th. It really you could sell on June 2nd, and then we close on June 23rd. Now, the, as Ann had mentioned in the market update, you know, one of, one of the hurdles that we've had to try to take advantage of market conditions is that we haven't passed the resolution yet. We haven't prepared the marketing documents from the official statement. So we can't move as a depth late to, to, to get into the market as quickly as maybe we would like. So if the board's inclined, you could proceed on this path, adopt the parameters resolution, and if the market has not uh, stabilized in the taxable market to a position that we like, we could just hit the pause button again and then proceed to continue to update the administration who can then update the board. But if the market's in a good position, you could proceed to sell. Or uh, maybe pause, and then a month and a half later, 41, we can get in the market in a fairly short period of time in, in a couple of weeks versus you know, six weeks or longer, depending on um, the situation. Uh, I don't have, uh, Andy, do you have anything else to add? Otherwise, I think we could open it up for questions. No, I think that's, uh, that hits it. We, we really want your to get the ball moving, so that hopefully a month from now we can have a, a more detailed conversation about where to stand and what we want to move forward with. Any questions for Anna, Bob? Hey, Carla, I know you guys have given me a thumbs up to go ahead with, uh, you know, getting the rating updated and whatnot, but given everything that happened, you know, over the last three or four weeks, I just felt we needed to circle back with the whole board here just to make sure that, that everybody was was familiar with what has happened with the market conditions here before we continue to plow ahead. So that's good. Is that timeline that we're looking at, is that for the taxable market or the tax uh, the tax free market? Yeah, if you were if you wanted to proceed with a, a taxable financing, that'd be the fastest we could go. The tax exempt because you wanted to sell a tax if you wanted to continue to try to take advantage and do a tax exempt financing, and um, you wouldn't be selling those bonds until August of 21, closing September 21. But prior to that, you would have to have made that abatement and set aside funds with the pain agent back in February. Okay, and then, and then and then you would do that four consecutive years, and that's and, and the, what we're talking about now is also is not necessarily that four percent rate. So depending on what the sales tax comes in and that abatement is, it could be the the increases we'd be looking at could be could exceed that four percent. Yeah, potentially. Yep. Unless you wanted to do like you did this last year. It, like if you if, if the board's inclined to think that this is going to be a dip and we'll probably go back to the trend we're on, then you know perhaps you cover the dip in sales tax with an abatement from other funds again. Now that would take away some of your operating dollars, and then you, but you kind of smooth out the fluctuations with that if you think you're going to get back on that trend. If you're more inclined to think this is going to be a, a more precipitous decline in sales tax, you know maybe that's when you want to look at a, a an alternate plan. And then Greg 
Is this would, would this be the last time we have to do this? Is that you know, that sort of does this get us through this entire? I mean, and get us to a much more reasonable um, scenario that is going forward. If, if we did the big taxable one now, yes, that would that would get us to where we need to be. Now, if we did the other scenario that Bob was talking about, you know, where, where we have throw the money and one back, then we'd just be doing those annual refundings that we had talked about in the business services meeting rather than trying to do this big one up front and just getting it over with. And one thing, Ann and I, when we prepared for this meeting back, you know, about 430 today, you know, it's not a uh, necessarily, I'm sorry, I hit the wrong button here, a all or none proposition. If you could go back yeah. to um, 2000 or slide 12. So the bonds that have the most risk are the bonds that are amortized further up the curve. So if you go specifically talking about, if you look across the linear 27 and 28, you know, those, the principal they put in those years are where you have the most risk with the market. So you could decide to do a hybrid approach where we refinance levy year 20 debt and we put that into levy year 27 and 28. And then we take another, and on a taxable basis, maybe you also do that with levy year 21. You fill in the last couple, three years, and then you wait, take a wait see approach on 22 and 23, where you don't have as much risk because those would only be moving out, looking out one or two years later. And you could incorporate the tax exempt portion on that. So it, it, maybe that's more complicated than you would like to get into looking at a hybrid situation. But you know, it's just a point to make that it isn't a it's not a binary choice necessarily doing one or the other. You could combine both options if you wanted to. We did do something similar with that with the 2014 Bs when we did those. We put a, we put a big chunk of those on the front end, and then just put a small portion on the back end. If you go back and look at that column for the for the 2014 B, so we had to move things around like that to kind of take advantage of whatever the best market conditions are at the time. You know, we've really kind of waited until the last minute to move stuff either long or try to keep it short or fill in the holes in other other places on the bond schedule too. So we have been pretty creative with that in the past when we've done these. I'm just always, you know, I mean, philosophically, you know, when looking at these things, we're always sort of, you know, every time we look at this, we're, we're moving the goalpost, moving the goalpost, moving the goalpost, trying to, to sort of, you know, for, for a longer period of time. I know we've talked about the fact that these buildings are not 25, you know, they're, they're, they're longer buildings. Um, and so it, 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 it is um, a, um, it, it, it's understandable, reasonable that we're, we're doing this. But I always have in the back of my mind that, you know, part of me just wants to rip off the Band-Aid and get it done um, and so that we can get it in a much better place. And so, but obviously we all look, you know, I mean, we've all, every, every time we do this, we have the same graph, the same graph that looks on paragraph 11, page 11, with a big, you know, Mount Everest point um, that we're trying to avoid um, and trying to sort of spread that out a little bit. I understand, um, you know, the, the motivation for doing that and why we do that. Um, you know, but, you know, I'm, I'm just always hoping, you know, that, yeah, yeah, it's, you know, when we do that, we, you know, we get to a point where we, that this is it, you know, that we're not doing this anymore, that we get to the point where we're actually, um, you know, we've paid off, you know, these buildings and, you know, we're, we're able to, to sort of, you know, get, you know, reduce the tax base on everybody and, and, and kind of, you know, stop draining, yeah, stop. You know, having you know, uh, giving some tax relief and trying to maybe do something, um, you know, uh, else or something. But it, it, I, I just I, I never like these things because I, I always feel like philosophically I'd rather just get it done with and pay it off. But you know, I don't think anyone really wants the uh, 64 percent increase in the uh, the levy for the building levy. Yeah, we understand, and I, you know, I think there's an argument for doing the one cell swoop for exactly that reason, then you guys are just done. Um, and and you can move on to think about other things instead of dealing with this annually and it will be um, a, a little bit of hassle factor every year. So um, that that is uh, part of the analysis and 
of course, exposes you to interest rate risk and what the, what the bond market is each year that we do it. So it's, uh, this is a, a lot to process and analyze, but we will work with Greg on, uh, on all of the considerations and bring you guys back a, a solid recommendation after, after we've cheered it all through. Any other questions for Ann or Bob? Okay, thanks for joining us tonight, you guys. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Have a good day, Thank you. Bye. 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 Thanks. Okay, anything else on administration reports, Dr. Wiesman or Dr. Brown? No. All righty. Um, next up is hearing of visitors. This is restricted to items listed under board action and discussion. And since there are no items listed under board action and discussion, we will not have any speakers. So um, next up, superintendent's comments, Dr. Wiesman. You know, I just, um, I've been trying to provide, thank you. I've been trying to provide uh, some updates as we go along um, a couple of times a week to the community and to employees and to the board around our response for the coronavirus pandemic and how that's impacting us here in the school district. I just want to take this time now to extend our appreciation to all of the many employees that are um, doing their best to stay engaged with children and engaged to keep our buildings safe and clean and engaged to make sure that administratively we're able to run and operationally we're able to run. Um, so with, with the, the likelihood that I'd leave someone out, I just want to extend a broad appreciation to all of our employees um, for that work. We're, uh, today we fed uh, just over 2,300, we gave out over 2,300 meals uh, last week, we had over 1,200 uh, live streaming sessions uh, throughout the week to students. Uh, we have around 8,000 people that um, are, are logging in and getting learning plans a couple times a week uh, off of the website. It's just a, a, great, um, a great show of the community here in the area, so I appreciate all that. Our hearts and prayers and thoughts and support go out to those families that are suffering either because they've lost someone or they're otherwise being impacted um, by everything that's happening. Um, we, just in the last few days, we've been really blessed to have a, a good number of donations that have been given or committed uh, for continued mobile food pantries. On Tuesday, we had a mobile food pantry that the district sponsored at South Middle School. And when the Northern Illinois Food Bank brings the, that that mobile food pantry, they have 200 boxes, and as people come through, they get a ticket, and they use the ticket to come get a box, and we gave out all 200 tickets before 4 o'clock uh, even hit, which was the start time for uh, the food pantry, so there was definitely a need, and just in the last uh, week since then, uh, we've had just an outpouring of uh, community members willing to help out with those and have a mobile food pantry scheduled through August uh, because of those donations. Specifically, um, the uh, Teachers Association here in Belvedere sponsored a fundraiser um, over the last couple days um, that they sent out and just asked employees if they'd be willing to donate to for uh, uh, food security needs. And the Teachers Association has uh, raised over $8,000 just from employees uh, for assistance with food in the coming months. We know that will be, uh, that will likely be a need uh, for a handful of months. Um, so I appreciate everybody's efforts and uh, their willingness and also the community's willingness to just be patient with us as we kind of go through this. Um, some upcoming district events that have not been canceled are our curriculum committee meeting, which is on April 23rd. There's a business services committee meeting scheduled for May 4th. We postponed our registration date and moved that back to May 8th. I think would encourage uh, the community members, this is a great time to just uh, get registered. We've relaxed a lot of our documentation requirements uh, if you are registering under the same address as last year. Um, we're, we, are, we have canceled a lot of activities, but high school graduation is something that we are postponing. It's really the event that we're going to try as hard as we can to make sure that, if at all possible, we can hold a high school graduation for our seniors. Last days of school are still uh, still scheduled as they were. 
Um, there's a handful of items for the board, the next board meeting uh, coming up. And unless board members have comments um, or questions about any of those comments that I shared, that's that's all I have at this time. Any questions or comments for Dr. Wiesman? I have one question in regards to um, students and families that may be affected, uh, may have people that are in the hospital or uh, possibly have passed away. Do we have any type of counseling available? I know if we were in school, there, might, there would be school counselors, or counselors available, psychologists available. Can they access some of the things you know? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, the counselors, social workers, and school psychologists are still trying to reach out to families. Um, they're prioritizing families that they had been working with or otherwise connected to uh, and may, may know of already some pre-existing needs there. But uh, if there are families that need assistance, they can definitely reach out. If they don't know a counselor or a school psychologist or social worker, they can reach out to their school office. Our high school offices are open Monday through Friday between 8 and 3. They're not open to the public, but they are open for phone calls and emails. The elementary and middle school offices are open as such on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. We've also been trying to uh, communicate and send out um, just, just links to community resources. And one of those community resources is the state hotline. There's a state just support hotline, and we've got information about that available on our Facebook page and in the most recent parent uh, mailer that we sent out. Anything else anyone has for Dr. Reeson? Alrighty, moving on and hearing the visitors. At this time, members of the public and employees of District 100 may make comments or ask questions of the board. Um, we did receive one um, letter um, yep. that a member of the public would like read. Her name is Julie Waters. She lives at 1912 Northwood Drive, Belvedere, Illinois. Um, and it's addressed to Governor J.D. Pritzker, State of Illinois. On behalf of all of the 2020 seniors waiting to graduate high school, we write to you. Thank you for all you are doing to the people of Illinois, and thank you to all of your staff and the state of Illinois employees who are working tirelessly to rid our state of COVID-19. I understand the real importance of social distancing and how we need to comply with the rules to help stop the spread of this virus. We all understand the need to close unnecessary businesses, homes on family and other gatherings, such as festivals, fairs, weddings, public schools, and playgrounds, to protect our children and teachers, close churches, women, hospital visits, and all non-social gatherings. I understand and agree that this will need to continue longer and into May or possibly still with restrictions in the June or beyond, but I urge you on behalf of all 2020 seniors waiting to graduate that you allow and urge all mayors and superintendents in Illinois to allow the graduates their ceremony and their day to walk across their stage, even if it has to be moved to June or July, even if it has to be outside in the stadiums as in the past, even if it has to be changed, shortened speeches, even if it has to be with only immediate family, even if other precautions need to be taken. But excuse me, thank you to not allow any schools in Illinois to outright cancel graduation. 2020 does not end until December, there is still plenty of time. Every child goes to school for 13 years of their life with the dream of reaching their graduation day and rocking walking across that stage. While the coronavirus is not banned, has been beyond our imagination this lifetime, and it was still unknown in so many ways, do not let the virus spin. And rob these kids for something they have worked so hard for and can never get back. Please remember your high school graduation day. We all remember that day like it was yesterday, what we wore, who was with us, who walked in front of us, how we celebrated with friends and family, and hopefully some of the speeches that perhaps impacted us in our lives. Let's let these seniors have their moments, their memories, acknowledgement of their accomplishments, and most importantly, their walks across the stage. They worked for this, they deserve this, even if the country has had to deal with an epidemic. We have allowed Alcohol sales to continue, marijuana dispensaries to operate, car dealerships to be open, and so much more. None of which are as important as high school graduation. In addition, you have allowed, and we have relied on most of these high school students to work during this epidemic, as their homes at grocery stores, gas stations, restaurants, and pizza places have been deemed essential. So please do not deny them graduation. Thank you for your time, dedication, concern, and we all pray that we will watch our seniors walk across their stage sometime in 2020. I'd 
um, that you recommended anyone else submit um, public comment? No, I believe that's the only one. Thank you for reading that. Okay. All right. Um, at this time, um, I would take a motion to go into closed executive session for the purpose of the employment, employment compensation, discipline, performance, or dismissal of specific employees. So move, Rob. Second, All right. Um, there will not be action to follow. Roll call, please. Mr. Carver. Aye. Mrs. Stellworth. Aye. Mrs. Reed Nemec. Aye. Mr. Schultz. Aye. Mr. Herrera. Aye. Mrs. Hope. Aye. Mrs. Mayville.
Okay, we should be back on uh, in public. All right, it's seven twenty-six. We are back in open session. Roll call, please. Mr. Barrera. Here. Mrs. Hope. Here. Mrs. Maybell. Here. Mrs. Reed Nemec. Here. Mr. Schultz. Here. Mrs. Selwick. Here. Mr. Torbert. Do I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? Rob moves. <laughs> Second, Mike Morgan. All righty, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. All right, that's a wrap. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everybody.